Okay, so a Lebanese uh, crisis. So joining me to shed some light on this and discuss a bit will be Karim Shahar, a political analyst in Beirut, and uh, Daniel uh, Yejek, author and researcher in Beirut. I hope I pronounce your name right. Now, uh, but let's go to uh, Karim first. Uh, Karim, uh, uh, this is uh, nine months, and uh, we have... Uh, the other prime minister we had the, before this prime minister, we had another prime minister also uh, actually not being Mustafa able to Ali. form a government for any reason. And now we have Mr. Hariri stuck. So what's the catch? I mean, what is it that keeps uh, uh, Hariri or anybody else from being able to form a new government? Okay. Well, uh, usually when it comes to forming a government in Lebanon, we have to take into account the influence of foreign forces inside Lebanon. When you need to discuss foreign forces, basically when you're talking about prime ministers, then you need to take into account the fact that Saudi Arabia has been meddling, meddling inside Lebanese politics, Lebanese domestic politics, ever since the Civil War. And any prime minister who needs to be efficient, who needs to be able to, uh, to, to rule, uh, as it were, need Saudi Arabia's blessing if they need to go ahead. And especially, th this becomes especially true when you have financial ties and when, when you've been brought up in Saudi Arabia and when you've been, basically your entire livelihood and your family uh, is, uh, is, is tied with Saudi Arabia. And when we need mm -hmm. to remember that a few years ago, Saad al-Hariri was kidnapped by the Saudis and right. forced to resign at the time. And then he came back to Lebanon and uh, basically, maybe because of international pressure, basically. Mm -hmm. But that's when we learned that the Saudis were acting as thugs to get Saad al-Hariri to resign because of, uh, basically because they were displeased with him. Now, Saad al-Hariri was uh, basically the, the deadlock during these nine months was because al-Hariri had grown weak and he wasn't as influential in the, uh, in the Sunni street as he was before. Now you have more contenders who, who, may, who, who were vying for, the, for a piece of the pie. And so he doesn't have the control he did before because he wasn't as efficient as he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. so, Saudi Arabia, so, uh, so Saudi Arabia rel relinquished its support for him. And basically the deadlock during these nine months was him trying to convince the Saudis to support him in one way or another. So mm -hmm. any, uh, if you remember, as you said, we, we've had other contenders for, uh, for the position of prime minister before, the most uh, prominent of which was Mustafa Adib. Mustafa Adib tried to form a government, mm -hmm. but then at the time, he was vetoed by Al-Haribi himself, because right. the, mm -hmm. the, he wasn't about to let any mm -hmm. new kid on the block assume mm -hmm. this kind of position. And okay. this is where we're at now. So and we're at a very, uh, we're, 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 at, we're at a very, very difficult place now. I mean, we're exactly. you have been in difficult place. <laughs> yes, yeah, since the Beirut explosion, uh, Lebanon has been in a very difficult position. So, Danielle, wh wh what's the way out of this? Is there any way out? Because you had a technocrat in place as prime minister, he couldn't solve the problem. You have Al Hadri back again; he's still saying there is no consensus. So, is there going to be no consensus whatsoever? What's the way out of this? You have a plethora of issues to deal with, even if you have a working government in place. Sure. Uh, apparently, as things seem currently, there is not necessarily a way out, at least not um, the way that it, it should go through a parliamentary system, uh, given that there is uh, the foreign, in, in foreign interference, as well as all the, the, the deadlocks internally. Uh, one of the reasons why Ali was not able to form any government is, of course, based on sectarian uh, representative system um, of the parliament in Lebanon and the particular um, unwritten rules that there are in the distribution of the sects within uh, the formation of a government. So there are various components that need to be taken into consideration, uh, none of which have been um, able to, to work out. Uh, and this has been a re repetitive story because it's not the first time that he resigns. As was mentioned, he uh, resigned in 2017 when he was kidnapped by Saudi Arabia. He resigned again in 2019 when mass protests broke out against uh, his uh, government. So the crisis uh, that Lebanon is faced with is, is not only the recent one 
of Hariri being unable to form a government, but it has been ongoing. It has put the country in a situation where it is right now with a daily increase in poverty, with the inflation skyrocketing, uh, and a political deadlock that does not seem to um, go anywhere near a uh, solution, particularly given that the so-called international community has been insisting on the formation of a uh, government in order to unlock uh, so-called international aid, which again seems unlikely at this moment. So there does not necessarily seem to be any solution um, within this current term of, of President Aoun, who uh, is still uh, going to be in power until the end of next year. So, Karim, what's going to happen next? Then? No consensus. Uh, uh, international community is not helping because they want a government in place, an official government. So, is worse uh, yet to come? I think. Look, there, there are, there is. I mean, there are people talking about civil war. I don't think it's going to go to that. I don't think it's within anyone's uh, interest to go to go to that option. But Hopefully I think what not. we will see is some form of controlled mm -hmm. chaos of destabilization of insecurity and you have the domestic scene on the one hand and you have what the Americans are trying to do on the other I mean we still have to forget that uh, we, uh, we still have to remember that a lot of the security reports that have been that have been coming out in recent weeks talk about the Americans uh, coordinating with the army and funding the army training the army mm -hmm. for a possible confrontation with the resistance on the inside so we do have to take that component into consideration. This destabilization, uh, one of its components targets the resistance. It targets the resistances, uh, the resistances, uh, the, the people who support the resistance, its popular base. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I don't, and, and I don't know how, how, uh, how, uh, how, what good, what good of a plan that will be, basically, because as, uh, as Daniel said, this is a confessional system we're talking about. So, the, the one, mm -hmm. uh, a half of the army is Muslim. Basically, uh, almost a quarter of the army are Shia Muslims. Mm -hmm. So, if the resistance were ever to be targeted, then you would only have to have to withdraw the Shias from the army. I mean, the, mm -hmm. the, the Shia who are in the army would never allow the resistance to be targeted. Basically, you would have a a complete, uh, not a complete, but a large destruction of the infrastructure of security in Lebanon because the army is the mm -hmm. only remaining institution that still brings the Lebanese together. Right. This is what the, uh, what the Americans are okay. working D on. Now, Daniel, do, do you see any ray of hope whatsoever that Lebanon could get out of this situation? Maybe some sort of, um, when there is no consensus among the Lebanese themselves. Could it be possibly some kind of international mediation that could come into play and do something? Yeah, I mean, if, if we look at the situation right now, a lot of the reasons, many of the reasons for Lebanon's ongoing collapse um, can be traced back to international interference. Um, and the one of the major issues that has been uh, addressed, including by the protesters and by many people within the country, is, for example, corruption uh, and nepotism that was evident, which was backed by uh, international or by, by foreign uh, powers for a while. So um, in order for that to happen, the international community or outside powers would have to be interested in the stability of Lebanon, which uh, is not necessarily uh, the case because there are different interests and um, the, it seems to be that there is an, an interest, at least from the West, in destabilizing uh, Lebanon and farther uh, increasing the, the, the suffering that is ongoing. And we shouldn't forget that there are also U.S. sanctions, uh, mm -hmm. uh, including U.S. sanctions against Syria that also influence the situation in Lebanon. So mm -hmm. it cannot really be detached from the situation in the region, uh, including the ongoing pressure against the resistance in Lebanon and beyond. Um, so um, I do not necessarily see the international community uh, as such as being in a uh, position to implement any situation that would be better structurally for, for the Lebanese uh, in, the, in the long term. Okay, we keep praying for you. That's the only thing we can do. Karim Sharara, political analyst, uh, and uh, Danielle Legic, author and researcher, join me from Beirut with their comments in this news review edition.